As you move towards retirement, you're going to often ask yourself, that's great, but what am I going to do with my time? So what I'd like to share with you today are 10 activities that I find to help me get the most out of my retirement. But before I do that, I'd like to ask that you take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you continue to get these updates. So here are the 10 activities. Let's get into it. First, traveling. When I retired, the first thing I wanted to do was take a trip. We had gone to a bunch of different destinations and places uh, previously, but we never really had the opportunity to spend time and really think about the places we want to go back to. And so when we retired, we took a trip to the Panama Canal. We took a 10-day cruise, and on that cruise, it took us to places like Colombia, took us to Panama, took us to the actual Panama Canal, Jamaica, Grand Cayman. And so we were able to look at each of those destinations and figure out which ones we want to go back to. Um, and when we got home, we had time to talk about it because we didn't have to go back to work. So we didn't need the vacation for the vacation. Uh, number two, we pursue our hobbies in a little bit more deeper way. We're able to really get into our gardening, really get in. My wife likes to paint and she could really get into her painting. I really get into my golfing, and I, I, I like to say I've been trying to get into golfing for a long time, but I'm actually showing some signs of improvement and working on the piano, playing the, playing the music, because when I was working, I never had the time to spend as much time to do any one of those things well. Uh, number three, you have the opportunity to volunteer. I've really been taking a look at how can I give back to the community in a meaningful way. Substitute teaching is one that comes up on the list, and I think at some point I'll, I'll get involved with that. Um, getting involved with the Master Gardener program so I could learn how to how to teach people to garden. And it also get, would give me an opportunity to get out into the community teaching people about sustainable gardening. Uh, number three, uh, fitness and outdoor activities. Uh, you have the opportunity to really focus on your health. In another video, I'm going to talk about my three priorities, but one of my top three priorities is my health. Um, I'm able to get out and, and go for walks a few times a week. Um, I have an exercise bike in the garage. I'm able to exercise. I have uh, some adjustable weights that I do. So about five days a week, I get in the garage. And just so you know, the CDC suggest that you have 150 uh, minutes per week of moderate exercise. And so that's 30 hours a day, five days a week. And that's, I look at that as a 30 day, I mean, I'm sorry, 30 minute investment every day into my own health and well-being so I can live a long retirement. Uh, number five, you have the opportunity to learn some things that you've always wanted to learn, whether it's taking classes or taking workshops or just different types of educational interests. Um, Again, I talk about going to the Master Gardening program because I, time, I tend to geek out on the science behind things. And so really being able to take a look at, you know, what are some of the things that are actually going right in the garden that maybe I'm doing right and I didn't know I was doing right? Or conversely, what are some of the things that are creating issues for me? Why do I have problems with my tomatoes every year? Because every year, folks, I have problems with my tomatoes. And they come at the end of the season, but I'd like to have a stronger catalyst uh, to move those forward. And I don't know what the issue is. So again, I digress, but I, there's an opportunity for, for incredible learning. Uh, spending time with family and friends. We spend time, we all have friends, we all have family, we spend time with them, we go around for holidays and things like that. But if you're like me, the one thing that I always think about is why can't, why don't I do more of this? Or why can't I do more of this? Whether it's with my friends, whether it's with my family. And so this year I have a niece, for example, who's graduating from university. And so I'm able to go down, spend some time there and, and be there for that and not necessarily think about when I'm coming back um, or going to see our aging parents on a regular basis. Um, in fact, later on today, I'm gonna go see my mom who turns eight. So it's those types of things that you really can go down, get involved in and appreciate that you're able to do when you're retired that are difficult when you're not retired. Um, Number seven, reading. I like to read. I like I, I'm a I'm a I like nonfiction. I like not I like autobiographical types of reading, and books on tape are great. But sometimes I just want to sit down with a good book and read and learn something. So then when I get into conversations, I have information. Uh, one of the things that I've been really taking a look at are 
you know, we taught everybody talks about how the world is today, but what are some of the facts there? Those are things that we can read. Uh, we're in a tumultuous time, to say the least, politically, but it's surprising to me sometimes how people don't really understand how government works because we don't go and take the time to understand that we unfortunately have to listen to the sources we get, which are sometimes not primary sources, which I think can create create challenges. And we want to know more, but we don't have the time to do it. But when you retire, you have the time to do it. Uh, number eight, uh, personal projects, taking on home renovations, you know, projects at home. One of the things that I enjoy doing is I like building things. I'm not Bob the Builder, but I like to build things. I like to put things together. And I remember recently, uh, well, not recently, last year, I built a pergola in my backyard. And that pergola took me more time than it should, but it's because when you're dealing with six by six pieces of wood, they're really heavy, it was hot outside, you know, blah, 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 woe is me. But I would work on a Saturday, work on a Sunday, and then by Monday, I was wiped out. And so I had to really pace myself to get it done, and I wasn't able to get it done in the time I could. And so had I had I not been working, I would have been able to, to tackle that, and it would have been to the standard that I wanted, which it was, it just took a long time to get there. But the other, something I have coming up now is inside of my music room or what I like to call my creative space or my creative den, I'm putting shelves in that come out of the wall. So I have a place for my piano, I have a place for records, I have a place for a turntable and a mixing board, and I have a place for my YouTube studio so I can make quality YouTube videos for all of you to continue to chronicle my retirement help you learn from my experiences as we continue down the path. Uh, but you have the opportunity to really work on a lot of personal projects that you may not have had time for before. Uh, number nine, you have the ability to engage more in cultural experiences, whether that's attending concerts, theater performances. My wife and I have a nephew who's a thespian. He's at the Boston Conservatory and he's going to be a big Broadway star. And so what we're hoping is that when he's a star, we get discounted tickets. But if we get discounted tickets, that's great. But if we can't find the time to go see him, then what good does that do us? Um, I'm, I'm kind of halfway kidding, but it really gives us the opportunity to engage in a way that we want to engage, as well as uh, you know going to different museums or festivals and things like that, because it's unfortunate how many of us find ourselves working so hard during the week that the only thing we have time for on the weekends is when, when everybody else isn't working is we find ourselves doing chores around the house, doing laundry, doing those things that we wish we had time to do. Imagine how beautiful it would be to be able to spread those things out. And so engaging in those cultural activities. And then last but not least, certainly not least, is you have the ability to relax. You know, it's having leisurely mornings, taking afternoon naps, and just enjoying your downtime because, you know, one of the reasons I think I've mentioned that, one of the reasons I call myself Sabado, I've been coined or given the name Sabado, is because every day is like Saturday. And so I'm able to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, or do nothing at all. And there's a lot of time where I do nothing at all, but interestingly enough, I still get more done in those days or weeks than I would have otherwise. Just because I'm, I have the downtime, I have the time to process information, I have time to figure out how I could be a better me um, for you and, and for others and so on. So that wraps up the top 10 early re retirement activities that I think you'll find uh, will help fill your cup in retirement. Um, and again, just to recap, uh, traveling, uh, you know, exploring new destinations and cultures. Uh, pursue, pursuing hobbies, <clears throat> diving deeper into interests, uh, volunteering, giving back to the community, um, fitness, uh, you know, outdoor activities, sports, hiking, and the like, uh, learning, getting out, taking some classes. Uh, number six, uh, spending time with family and friends. Number seven, reading, catching up on the books that you wanted to read or the information that you wanted to learn about. Uh, number eight, personal projects. Uh, number nine, cultural experiences like concerts and theater performances and so on. And number 10, again, last but not least, is relaxing. So again, I hope that you found this 
video meaningful. And if you did find it meaningful or helpful in any way, please, I ask that you subscribe and hit that like button so we can continue this channel and pushing this information out to as many people as we can because it's all about having the quality of life that we want, the quality of life that we deserve, and understanding that what we may have not thought was possible was possible, or trying to figure out how to make some of those things possible. So again, have a good rest of your day, and we will catch up soon. Thank you.